Speaking of exotic, we were talking about over here solar technology, solar energy technology. So let's move a bit from hardware to software. Um, once again, we will be talking automation. So once again, not a simple topic. Like I said, the tail end of our summit contains some quite complex uh, presentations. So next up, we will be talking about Kubernetes. Specifically, we'll be talking about Zabbix operator, bringing it to Kubernetes and how we can do that, how we can use it, what's the benefit. So let's welcome the technical lead of automation from Converge TP in the USA, Tyler French, welcome. Hi there, welcome to bringing Zabbix to Kubernetes, the Zabbix operator. My name is Tyler French. I'm the technical lead of automations for the cloud group at Converge Technology Solutions, where we are a managed services and professional services company and my group is specifically looking at automation and focused on driving any and all automation throughout the business. You can find me most of the time at French Toasters 3 on Twitter or pretty much any other social media site just at French Toasters. So I wanted to kind of start us off with explaining what Kubernetes operators are and where they kind of started out. So operators are actually a component of what the project has been coined, the Operator Framework, which is a CNCF incubating project. And the CNCF is the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. They are also the same foundation that backs Kubernetes. But the Operator Framework was actually started at CoreOS back, uh, way back in the day before they were acquired by Red Hat they had kind of this idea of what they've kind of coined an operator is a place to put operational knowledge into software where previously that knowledge was held in the minds of administrators. So if we unpack that sentence or explanation that they've given us there, that's really just saying that in today's age, there's an API or a CLI for just about any and everything uh, that we work with in a day-to-day -day as an IT administrator. So what they're trying to do is really create that framework that provides us a way to build operators or take that operational knowledge that we know as administrators and put that to work for us. So what operators really do is give us a way to write down what we know needs to happen in certain scenarios or in certain upgrade paths and then the operator just does that for us. So if we have multiple deployments of something, we don't really have to worry about touching each and every one of them as long as our operator understands how to handle each of the, of the different versions of that application. So one of the other things that they brought to us through this project was the operator SDK. That is a command line tool that gives us a really robust framework for building and designing these operators. What it does is it generates the scaffolding code that we need in order to build out all of our Kubernetes controllers, our resource definitions, our Docker files, our CI CD build files, or really just anything that you are going to have to always have if you are building an operator. The SDK is there to assist you in updating and maintaining that operator. One of the key features that it has is it allows you to build three different types of operators out of the box. First being Ansible, then Go and Helm. So if you think of Ansible here, that really just means you can apply any role or set of roles to a particular operator in just by dragging and dropping in the role into the correct folder within the operator, building it and then deploying it to your cluster. And then bam, you have that operator deploying and managing custom resources that are backed by these Ansible playbooks. Now, in some more advanced cases, you might wanna use some uh, programming language like Go which is extremely flexible as we see the Zabbix Agent 2 is now based around Go. So it, it's one of those up and coming languages that is really at the forefront of cloud native computing. 
So it gives us that flexibility to interact with databases, APIs, you name it, right? So anything that you would want to do in code, you can then create some Go package that evaluates all of these things and either maybe it actually deploys some Kubernetes resources to help it do that, or it just kind of manages state of things. Now, the other option is Helm, which is really more targeted towards if you actually already have a deployment on a Kubernetes cluster or of your application for Kubernetes. That will allow you to manage all the different Helm chart versions or values that any of your instances might need. So now that we kind of know how operators were designed, where they came from, let's talk about how you actually interact with it from kind of a, an administrator standpoint, really. So what you do is define what uh, they call in Kubernetes land a custom resource definition. Now that is an API extension that is built into Kubernetes and is something that's been there since just about the beginning. And what that does is it allows you to define your own API specification for a custom resource within a Kubernetes cluster. Now, if we dive into that a little bit deeper, we find that what that really is, is a YAML specification that allows us to put in all the variables or all the inputs that we expect our operator to use in its decision-making process, or it's just general build and deploy of an instance within, say, your Kubernetes cluster, which is the general use case. However, if you're extending it with Go, you could, in theory, just deploy to any API or any other resource within your ability within Go or Ansible, right? So if we think about what we need to manage for, say, a Zabbix instance, we would define that using our custom resource definition uh, specification that we've come up for this project. And some of those things that we can actually control are things like container images, database claim size, replicas, or you know use flags within that specification to call upon different actions that we might want to perform once a, in our case, a Zabbix instance is actually up and running. So we have flags for cluster monitoring and database monitoring. What those do in our scenario with Zabbix is actually just deploy monitoring for all of the cluster nodes within your Kubernetes cluster. And you see the, the you might notice the coming soon feature on uh, database monitoring. That's still kind of in the works. It uh, fundamentally, it, we can totally get it to work, you know, because Zabbix can monitor just about anything. I uh, just haven't had the time really to get down to the nitty gritty of exactly what's going on with that. So as I mentioned, nitty gritty there, we'll start roll right into the guts of what this operator is, how it was built, and kind of what's maybe different than most situations. So the this operator is actually based on Ansible. And what it does is deploy a Zabbix role into a Kubernetes cluster. And what that role really is, is I've taken the Docker Compose files for Zabbix from the official re repositories, run uh, a tool called Compose over those uh, Docker Compose files, which if you see through the name there, you might notice the K. It is doing what uh, you would expect, or I would expect, and uh, it's converting your Docker Compose files into Kubernetes resource definitions. Now, that isn't just a one-to-one -one port into Ansible there by any means, really, but uh, it allowed me to create the Ansible role that actually deploys the Zabbix instance for us. Now, one of the kind of key challenges that I was able to resolve with this project was actually using uh, the database. So, we have a 
base Postgres image. And within that, I was able to preload the Zabbix schema using just the standard schema file that you would find from any install from whatever version you happen to choose and load that into the image along with starting the container using the Zavix user as well as passing a set of credentials in for that user. So I was able to just bring up a Zavix database willy-nilly within a Postgres stateful set. And because it's a stateful set, I actually have the ability to save my state, right? So that's one of the key features of this project that I think is something worth noting here. Now, other features that are coming that will be just as uh, pivotal, if not uh, maybe a little bit more to some people, uh, would be cluster node monitoring, where we add all of the nodes within a Kubernetes cluster that your infrastructure for your Zabbix is running upon, uh, deployed Prometheus node exporter, uh, now, in some cases, uh, depending on what your storage class is, you may want to deploy a couple other exporters to add a little bit of enhanced monitoring um, to the the operator. However, that's something kind of out of scope for this. But uh, one thing to note with this type of monitoring, uh, specifically cluster node monitoring, is that we have to be at a cluster scope for the service account that is actually managing the operator uh, in order to actually be able to interact with the nodes within the cluster. Now, that is only a requirement if you want the operator itself to manage the install of Prometheus uh, or the Prometheus node exporter, excuse me. Now, if you wanted to kind of handle that or maybe install that into your cluster at install time of your cluster. That is something you could certainly do. And then you wouldn't necessarily need the cluster scope. That would be you know, a welcomed pull request if someone wants to help us out in that area. One of the other things uh, that we have is, or that we're working towards is database monitoring. Now we're able to add the database into Zabbix itself, no problem. The only, and then also apply the, the template for Postgres monitoring that comes out of the box with uh, most versions of Zabbix these days. I know it's in 5.0. Um, but one of the issues we're having is when we go to run PSQL commands within the database container, it doesn't want to play nice with that. Uh, so if anybody has any hints or has solved this problem before, uh, please submit an issue or pull request. That'd be great. Uh, so I wanted to quickly get into a little demo here. Um, so this is just a, a terminal session that we have here where we're starting our Minikube cluster, which is just deploying a Kubernetes cluster from scratch. And once we see that cluster actually become available, we'll be doing all of the needful here to actually install the operator and get a cluster up and running, uh, or excuse me, not a cluster, a Zabbix instance up and running, all from, you know, just a couple minutes here. One of the first things we'll see this uh, demo do is we'll actually create a namespace and then using uh, the Helm chart that's in the repository, we will go ahead and deploy the operator into the cluster. So here we go, creating the namespace. And then here in a second, there's our Helm chart install. And now we'll just kind of watch and wait for that operator to become available. Now, one thing that we'll see here is, if you might notice, you'll see a lot of different states and maybe a double output of a few things. Um, that's going to happen, and that's really just showing us the output of the container going from being added to the cluster and then starting up. And now we're about to actually see the magic. So we see here we have our Postgres server, our Zabbix server, Zabbix web. Uh, there's our node exporter coming on up. It looks like web is up and running now as well. Now, one thing to note is that we are going to start to see a failure in this Zavix configure job. 
That is because uh, as you're deploying this, you can't exactly control when the database comes up versus the actual Zavix server. So the configure job needs the server up and happy with the database for it to actually be able to complete. So that's why we see some of these errors here. Now, here in a second, once the reset on the crash loop back off uh, is triggered, we will see it start running again. And yep, there it completed. So now I'm just going to list the services within Minikube and then just do a simple curl on our Zabbix web server to kind of validate that we have an instance of Zabbix up and running. I would have liked to show the actual items and additional cluster monitoring, but with uh, the limitations here, we'll just have to live with it. And so, yeah, we can see here that we have content Zavix SIA. That looks good. You know, if we come down here, we see server name Zavix Docker. That bodes well for the container that we're actually running. Hope oh, and quick the little too fast, but um, we kind of got the gist of it there. So here are just some useful links that I wanted to post. Uh, mainly, you know, main big one, link to the operator here. Um, oops, go back again. And the other one is actually the zavix.com slash integration slash Kubernetes. Um, if you're not familiar with zavix.com integration slash integrations, it's a great place to find uh, additional monitoring or just kind of integrations within Zavix that you probably as an administrator might want to do at some point in your career. Um, so I would highly suggest you all check that out. Uh, additionally, there's the operator framework.io that I think I linked earlier, uh, the, S the operator SDK and Compose. So Compose was actually one of those, uh, it's just a really handy CLI tool to have in your, your toolkit. So I would highly suggest looking at it. And that's really all I got. If anybody has any questions, feel feel free to uh, DM me at French Toasters Three on Twitter, or just go ahead and submit an issue on the repo or pull request if you're looking to actually help out. Thanks for your time and have a great day. Hey Tyler, thank you for your nice presentation and thank you for participating in the Q and A. We have a couple of questions for you, so I hope you're ready to answer them. They're not that complex, but people are interested in your environment and how you set things up. So, Sounds good. first off, um, so you're using Postgres in your environment. So maybe you can tell us why you ended up with that choice. And also, um, are you using Timescale? If yes, then how's it going with it? Are you happy with it? If no, then uh, why not? Uh, so I chose Postgres just uh, out of simplicity. It was uh, one of the quicker container-based uh, databases to stand up. And actually, we're not using Timescale in that just yet. Any plans on doing so maybe in the future? Uh, I think once we start to uh, get a little bit larger environment with that instance, uh, we could see some benefits from it. But right now, it's kind of small. So I uh, didn't want to add that operational overhead for us there. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, got it. So it's a case of pretty much operational overhead. Okay, yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Um, have you considered some other options like command line tools, API, something like that to monitor your cluster nodes um, instead of using a Prometheus exporter? Um, yeah, uh, I have. I just wanted to kind of keep it vanilla Kubernetes uh, for this uh, particular example here. Um, and there's actually, uh, I had some ideas to use maybe some actual Ansible uh, Zabbix integrations to add the nodes and set up some monitoring in there as opposed to just a standard Python script that I had set up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, why I'm asking is because a lot of our community members, like the question, how can I monitor Kubernetes? It very often comes up. And there are multiple <laughs> ah, approaches, yes. yes, and Prometheus is one of those. Um, so once again, feel free to stick with the chat, with the Q&A section, probably someone is going to ask you some guidelines on how they can implement the same kind of Kubernetes monitoring as you have. Oh, yeah. Um, all right, so regarding your current setup, um, do you maybe have some kind of future steps in your mind, what you want to change or improve just like generally? How do you see it in the future? Uh, yeah, I definitely want to change the uh, way that uh, cluster nodes and some of the auto magic uh, adding of 
operators and uh, the actual nodes into Zabbix, uh, because that's just kind of a standalone hacked together script for right now, but I uh, want to switch to some of the, like I mentioned previously, the Ansible-based Zabbix integrations, mm -hmm. or maybe some other CLI tool that interacts a little bit better with Zabbix. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you a lot. That will be all. And like I said, stick with us. Maybe share your opinions on the forums, even if, if you know, um, you don't get asked enough questions in chat. I think this knowledge is really valuable. Um, so I'd like for you to participate maybe in our forums or Reddit or something like that. Because like I said, your setup is, is quite popular. And we get asked about setups like this quite a lot. So, And of course, we'll make your presentation available at some point online so everyone will have access to it. Um, thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Uh